Almost 200 years ago, Spanish Captain Jose Francisco de Ortega established a military base on this scenic strip of California coastline. Soon after, Father Junipero Serra founded a mission here, the Mission of Santa Barbara. The mission still stands, and Santa Barbara, incorporated as a city in 1850, retains much of the style and architectural charm of its original Spanish founders. Today, this colorful resort city of over 72,000 is known for its good living, its lovely gardens and greenery, its handsome university, its fine beaches, its glorious weather, and its oil. For nature, which endowed Santa Barbara with so much beauty, also deposited under its channel a vast reserve of crude oil. Removing that oil while also preserving and protecting the environment is one of the great challenges the American oil industry is facing today. Why in the hell are they drilling oil out here in the middle of our nice channel? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. If there is a need for it, genuine need, then we should drill. Well, I know we need oil. I use oil in the car, I use it for my boat. I wish it didn't have to be here. Oil and Santa Barbara have never been strangers. For centuries, natural oil seepage has been common in the area. The Shumash Indians came to Santa Barbara and nearby Carpinteria to caulk their canoes with the tar they found washed up on the rocks along the shore. Dozens of natural oil seeps have been noted in the channel waters, and one off Coal Oil Point releases an estimated 2,000 gallons of oil a day. No wonder then that offshore oil drilling got its start around Santa Barbara. The first wells were drilled off the end of piers at Summerland in 1896, and then later at nearby Elwood. In fact, because of its oil field, Elwood holds the distinction of being the only place in the continental United States that was shelled by the Japanese in World War II. Today, there are more than 200 oil wells in state waters of the Santa Barbara Channel. An evolutionary step which has permitted drilling to move farther out into the channel was the development of mobile drilling rigs and offshore platforms. And now, plans are being made to begin oil production still farther out in waters more than 800 feet deep. The people of Santa Barbara have some clear-cut opinions about oil drilling in the channel. Well, I don't like it. I, I know we need oil, and I'd like to see as little drilling as possible to supply our needs. Well, I don't uh, object to it as long as it's, uh, you know, within the reasonable limits. It would be very difficult to convince me that those rigs are ultimately safe. If they take all the precautions and spend the money and not cut corners, then uh, it's fine. It would be nice to deep water drilling further out so to visually preserve uh, the environment I think that the geology of our channel is such that we should never they should never have allowed it in the first place I think they should drill it and get it over with itself I know that our country needs oil and there's oil out there and I guess uh, we're stuck with those things until they get the oil out of there and so it goes on the one hand, the fast-growing national demand for more oil. On the other, the people who have to live with oil production nearby and don't like it. Unavoidably, at Santa Barbara, this feeling is heightened by the dread of another blowout like the one of January 69, which soiled the beaches and waters. Reports have indicated that, bad as it was, no long-lasting harm was done. And uh, we have the Harbor Restaurant even today. We have people from the east, and uh, they come from all over the world. And you see them looking at a window and looking out. I said, may I help you? They said, yes. Where's the oil at here? I thought, you know, I thought we'd see a lot of oil here, but I don't see any oil. And it has, but not the oil. And the oil still was bad. But it was cleaned up in very, very good shape. Today, we have some of the finest 
and cleanest beaches in the world. The we capture uh, sea lions, pursues, and aquariums. We also capture porpoise and, uh, and pilot whales. Have you found the wildlife affected by the oil drilling in the channel? Uh, basically, not in my operation. There's still a lot of sea lions around and a lot of porpoise and, and whales also. Did the oil spill in 69 do any damage to the wildlife? Well, it did, uh, it did some to the birds and things, of course, along the shoreline, but, uh, and some sea lions did get oil on them, but it didn't, uh, it didn't do uh, damage that you can visibly see now. The nation's need for oil is beyond question. Everything that rolls, moves through the water, or flies, needs petroleum or petroleum byproducts. We depend on petrochemical products for more than 15,000 everyday items, from cosmetics, to aspirin, to plastic dolls, paints, fertilizers, and fabrics. The country, in addition, gets three quarters of its energy for heat, transportation, and power from gas and oil. And the demands for energy are constantly expanding. When today's children are teenagers, the need for energy will be double what it is now. What do oil men mean when they talk about an energy crisis? In this country, uh we're now consuming oil and gas at a rate greater than we're finding it. This means that we have to import oil uh, from abroad from areas that are less secure than if we produced it here in this country. Basically, what's needed is uh, an increased exploratory effort by the industry. So the eyes of the oil men are looking in a new direction. 30 miles from Santa Barbara, in the western part of the Ventura Basin, is an area called the Santa Ynez Unit. Rights to explore and produce oil and gas in this area were obtained by several oil companies through sealed bids from the federal government. It is planned for one company, Humble Oil and Refining Company, to operate this unit on behalf of itself and other successful bidders. Since the beginning of 1968, two floating drilling vessels, a ship, the Wodico 4, and what's known as a semi-submersible drilling rig, the Blue Water 2, have been exploring the Santa Barbara Channel. To the oil men, the techniques of drilling at sea are not much different from drilling on dry land. Well, the actual drilling of the well, very little different. We have uh, the problems of motion uh, vessels of Moving with the seas, we uh, actually drill our well about like we do on land. We have more people involved, better equipment, more help out here than we normally have on land. See that there's a, a great lot of difference other than that it's wet under us. Through its process of search and find over many years, coupled with extensive research, Humble has developed and perfected much of the technical know-how it will need for successful and safe production in deep water. This includes computerized controls and underwater sonic devices to help the drilling rig remain positioned directly over the drilling hole. A television camera equipped with its own high power light is used for underwater inspection. The TV camera can survey every inch of pipe between the vessel and the seabed. Humble employs the most advanced safety procedures. Out of nearly 1,500 offshore wells Humble has drilled in the United States waters, there have been only three minor spills, none in the Santa Barbara Channel. And in each of these three cases, everything was cleaned up in a matter of hours. This massive piece of equipment weighs about 50 tons and stands 30 feet high. This blowout preventer is only part of the complex safety system used in offshore drilling. The BOP, as it is called, goes underwater and is designed to prevent uncontrolled flow from a well. When drilling from a floating rig, the BOP is attached to the wellhead on the ocean floor. The well is drilled directly through the BOP. If pressures in the well build up to a high level, One of several valves in the BOP can divert the flow, and heavy mud is pumped into the well to control the pressure. 
This blowout preventer is tested every day to make certain all shutoff valves are working properly. Drilling has been successfully completed in water depths to 1,500 feet. However, producing oil in deep water requires different procedures. Humble's solution to deep water production is illustrated by this model. The company is making plans to construct a platform like this. Place it in more than 800 feet of water and then drill from the platform. Some of the well completions will be placed underwater in a submerged production system. Are you familiar with Humble Oil Company's plans for deep water drilling off Gaviota? No, I'm afraid I'm not. No, no, I, I, I'm not familiar with it. No, I'm not. I'd like to hear a little bit about it. Here's how the plan will work. The deep water platform will be assembled on its side in a dry dock, just as a ship would be built. For this first deep water platform, the submerged production system, or SPS, will be tested in the platform. When the platform is completed, the dry dock will be flooded. Flotation tanks will give added buoyancy to the structure. Now the finished platform, nearly as long as three football fields, will be towed to the drilling site in the channel. This is a 16-foot model of the platform built for test purposes. When it reaches the drilling site, controlled flooding of the platform legs will roll it over and upend it for its descent to the channel floor. What we see happening here in only a few seconds actually will take some 14 hours with the real platform. As soon as the platform is settled in the water, eight 36-inch steel piles will be driven around each leg more than 100 feet into the seabed. To make it solidly secure, a hole will be drilled through each 36-inch pile to a depth of about 350 feet. And a 30-inch pile will be inserted in each hole and cemented in place. With this foundation, the platform is designed to withstand the maximum seismic and wave forces that are anticipated in the channel. Finally, a derrick barge will place the working decks atop the platform. When the derricks are in place, the deep water platform will be ready to begin its mission. Now let's take a closer look at the SPS, or Submerged Production System. This pilot SPS unit will have three wells on it, and future systems may handle up to 40 wells. The wells are drilled one at a time and then are connected together. A series of pipes and valves controls the flow of the wells and permits the servicing of all wells in the system. Many consultants and contractors active in aerospace achievements have participated in the development of the SPS to assure its reliability. Companies like TRW Controls, General Electric, Martin Marietta, and Vetco Offshore Industries. Just as NASA ground control in Houston can tell how every circuit and transistor is functioning on a spacecraft to the moon, so with the SPS, the control station has a monitoring system to check all equipment in the sea. In addition, there's an underwater safety system. From an environmental point of view, the SPS was built with one goal in mind, to allow no pollution whatever. Any oil that might leak from the system will be trapped by inverted drip pans that cover the entire manifold. At the first hint of oil, a sensing device immediately stops well production and closes the manifold valves in that particular area. The oil trapped in the drip pan is then put back in the pipeline. Servicing of the SPS will be done by this maintenance manipulator. Around the entire SPS is a track. The manipulator reels itself down a cable and onto the track. It picks up an anchor which holds it to the track then moves to the location of the defective valve or equipment pod. The maintenance manipulator removes the part to be replaced, stores it, picks up a new part, and inserts it. If required, there's also a diving bell for a manned operation. It's job done, 
and the newly installed part carefully tested. The maintenance manipulator now goes back to the surface. In the future, submerged production systems will be located near the sea floor rather than on a platform. Wells will be drilled through the SPS by a floating rig, just as exploratory wells are done now. These wells will be connected to the SPS manifold and produced through a submarine pipeline to a platform. More than 100 man years of engineering effort have gone into the creation of this system, which is basically an extension of proven oil field technology. In keeping with its avowed aim of protecting the environment, Humble added an environmental conservation manager to its Western division in 1968. Art Jones tells what his job entails. We seek to preserve environmental quality in the Santa Barbara Channel by using the best technology available to us, by training our men to ensure they're thoroughly knowledgeable in all phases of our operations and to cope with any emergency. In carrying out my responsibilities in this regard, I frequently visit the drilling rigs and talk directly with the men involved and to see firsthand the operations. I might add that we are monitored by the representatives of the U.S. Geological Survey and uh, uh, this gives further assurance that we're carrying our operations uh, out properly and in keeping with all regulations. In the event we were unable to do this for any reason, my responsibilities are simply to shut the operation down. In developing its plans for deep water drilling, has Humble sought the advice of experts in other fields? Yes, we have. We have uh, sought out the advice and counsel of both uh, individuals and companies in such fields as platform design, wave forces, weather, uh, equipment reliability, and metallurgy. For example, in our consideration of earthquake design, we've sought out such experts as Dr. Paul Jennings of Caltech. Dr. Jennings, what were your contributions to the design of Humble's deep water platform? I did two things for them. I set the level of the earthquakes, which they must consider in the design. And secondly, I've been guiding in a general way their structural dynamic studies of the response of the offshore drilling platforms to strong earthquake motions. From your knowledge of the characteristics of strong earthquake motions, how safe is the deep water platform? Because of the uh, more stringent requirements, the offshore drilling platforms are safer in earthquake motions than the uh, typical building structure. In the uh, unlikely event that very strong shaking should occur right under the tower, right on the site, we expect the, the tower to be able to take this motion with, without failure. Typical buildings would not be able to do this. Not everyone in Santa Barbara shares Humboldt's enthusiasm for their deep water plan. Among the critics is the organization known as GOO, Get Oil Out. It's an interesting scheme. The technology is, uh, is fascinating, uh, objectively. Uh, but I, I have some uh, very serious questions as a, as a layman of the repair. They're going to drill in uh, water well beyond the depth that a uh, human can dive to to uh, bring about any repairs to any damages that might occur. So they have shown uh, models of a um, remote vehicle which could go down and by video control various ways uh, correct any malfunctions. And I have a very basic question on this thing. The, how will this thing see in a, if it's trying to operate in a sea of oil? In addition to the quality of manufacturing in the test, we've incorporated in our design what we call a safety system. Now, the safety system uh, really is a system that attempts to take care of any malfunctions. The extreme uh, caution has been exercised in quality control. So the equipment that we have built is of very good quality. An example of how the system works is that should we have a little uh, uh, abnormal pressure fluctuations in the pressure piping, the pressure sensor would pick it up and it would shut down the valves associated with that part of the manifold and stop the production. Our approach to this, if you will, is that we'd much rather lose production than we would lose oil into the sea or cause pollution. I've looked at the drawings of the equipment that they're planning to put in, in the site out there. 
Uh, I've talked at length with some of their uh, production people. It's very, very impressive. Uh, however, I'm not convinced that it's completely safe. I would say with the, uh, the know-how and uh, technical knowledge of what we accumulated in the last 16 years, we are well able to design and build equipment fail-safe in deep water. Before the SPS is ever put into the Santa Barbara Channel, there will be dry tests in the open air. Following successful completion of these tests, the cement pit at Vetco, in which the SPS was assembled, will be flooded for thorough underwater testing. Only after exhaustive testing and approval from appropriate agencies in the U.S. government under today's stringent regulations, then and only then will the SPS and the deepwater platform go into the channel. But the controversy over this plan continues. Well, I don't think that we should even try and find out if, if it's a plan that should work. I don't think that the chance is worth taking. If uh, adequate protection can be made so that we don't experience the same problem that we did a couple of years ago, where uh, there couldn't be an accident that would pollute the coastline and pollute the waters, uh, I don't see any difference in drilling in deep water or drilling closer to shore like some of the other rigs are. I hope they drill further and more and more. Thank I you. think we need it. As I understand it, they've never drilled that deeply before, so I believe that uh, it's very risky and shouldn't be done. I feel that unless they can do the job without going ahead and uh, not having any spills, they won't tackle it. And I feel that uh, it is a very, very good company and will not do anything to, because they too are cognizant of the fact of how we Santa Barbara's feel. Uh, my feeling is that it's premature to test this in the Santa Barbara Channel, and I feel that we will be able to have underwater completions that are reliable if we work at it, and we will be able to contain spills in open water. But right now, I don't believe we can. I think that uh, the city and the oil can get along the people, too, and we have to come to an agreement. We need the oil in. I think we can do it. What would you say to the people in Santa Barbara who are objecting to the deep water drilling because of environmental reasons? I would only say this, that uh, we are well aware, uh, based not only on our experience in Santa Barbara, but every other place, that uh, one of the most pressing needs now is for, for all of us to conduct our business and our operations in such a way that we properly preserve and protect the environment against uh, any further incidents. One of the most frequent and persistent criticisms of oil development in the channel is the very look of the production platforms. As some Santa Barbarans put it. I think that they, they don't add very much to the scenery. <laughs> they don't look very good, all right. They get some way of doing it without those platforms. It's under, under, under sea or under something to hide them, you know? That's the, that's the problem. That's the only problem I figure. If we could do something about making the platforms less unsightly, uh, although they're rather nice for navigating purposes. <laughs> less unsightly. Not an unreasonable request and not an impossible task. Camouflaging of producing wells has been carried out quite effectively in many ways. That's not an office building. It's an oil well in disguise, right in the heart of Los Angeles. Pedestrians and motorists go by here every day and hardly notice that there's a full-fledged oil field behind that carefully cultivated greenery. And residents of Long Beach, California, look out on a series of rigs dressed up as high-rise apartments. Humble is currently considering several ideas that might be used to give the deep water platform a more pleasing appearance. Lighting effects to make it less visible. Special paneling. Perhaps even a veil of spray to mask the platform from shore. Just recently, half a platform was rigged with special water nozzles to test the effectiveness of spray as camouflage. Further testing will be done. However, the split screen shows this technique has real possibilities. In any case, the number of platforms needed for oil production will be reduced by Humble's deep water production system.
And so this lovely place, this scenic waterway, blessed with such abundance of natural beauty and richness, remains a challenge. A challenge to men's minds and resources. A challenge with much to give and much to protect. Here, disaster provoked national concern over our environment. How appropriate it would be for the Santa Barbara Channel now to become a place where all will say, here industry met its responsibility to man and to nature.